The power of drama is a terrible curse to bear. What I mean by drama in this case is, of course, stirring the social pot with rumors, stories, suggestions, you know, talking behind people's back. You know what I mean. I'm certain everybody knows. If you've been through school at all, you've seen it. And for those of us who have been on the ex the receiving end of drama, it's not a fun thing, and it's it, it can potentially mess up your entire high school and give you issues, and you know, it's it's a terrible thing, but... To be on the giving side of the drama, to control that firestorm of social interaction, it's a powerful thing. Whether it's in high school or at an office building or some other social gathering of regular basis where people have gathered and have to be around each other repeatedly, social camps of any sort, church gatherings, they all have this drama in the people who make this drama happen. They gain social clout through it, social power. They're creating these firestorms of, of, well, of approval or disapproval. These social firestorms they conjure can have people cast out of approval or brought into the secret fold. You know how these things work. It's kind of tiered. The closer you are to the more popular people and approval, the more social power you have. There's a whole thing to it that's big, but... Just know that the people who make the drama happen and direct it for their own uses are basically, they're the centers of these nests of power, if you will. And they have, like I've said, a great power from it, this control. You gain sycophants from it, people who latch on to you and say yes to what you want and work with you because they want a taste of that power. They're the fish that swim behind the shark to eat its leftovers. They have their sycophants, and they have their victims. But in the end, it all leads to one kind of sad thing. Yeah, you have the social clout and power, but you don't really have friends. Not true friends. You have sycophants. You have toadies. You have people who, they will work with you because it's the only way to get the approval they want, too, or to get to talk to somebody. And, yeah, they're not your friends. No one really there is your friend anymore in that social network, that gathering. They're either your enemies, your sycophants, your victims, or people off to the side. Maybe they're more powerful, but they're not your friends. And in the end, those people that you might have, you know, walked upon to get your clout, they get to go out afterwards and have fun with their friends and let their guard down, but not those people who are in the center of these firestorms, not the drama creators. They don't have friends. They don't get to let their guard down. They have to be the image of themselves at all times. They have to be what they've created for themselves. If they let their guard down and show weakness, their enemies, the people they have thrown down to get where they are, will strike back. If they do something bad, then the drama turns against them, and it goes back and forth. And uh. Real video now, I guess. It's a never-ending power struggle for those people. And you might look at the life, maybe in high school, of the glitzy, glamorous, popular girls who can say a few snipey words about some other person and suddenly no one talks to them. It, it all... It's stupid, but at the same time it's real and it exists and it's a powerful thing at that point. You might look at those people and say, you might want to be them, perhaps, or you want that life, but know that it, it's not that pleasant. It's a life where you have to be on guard with everybody you interact with. A life where that you really don't get to have fun in a clean sense. It's all about the drama, the interaction between this person and that person, and what can you gain from that, and using people. And Well, whether it's at the end of the day, or when you retire from the office, or when you graduate, the people whom you have formed connections with, they're going to be there in the world. And you're going to have to depend on them at some point, and you're going to have to live with them. And if you've made an enemy of most people, and you've turned yourself into a social manipulator, well, eventually the bigger fish comes, the prettier girl comes, the younger person comes, and you're displaced. You are dethroned, and the next great champion arises, right? 
No one cares about you anymore. That's the sad truth. You don't have the power that the sycophants wanted. You don't represent the threat that your enemies cared about. You're yesterday's news, and that that's it. That's the end of that, really. Unless something changes in their life, whether they make something better of themselves, well, they have a sad, unfortunately lonely life, basically. So... If you were victimized by such people, know that their life is not so great themselves and they are kind of victims of their own path. And if you pursue this sort of vindictive mindset to feel better about yourself, know where it's going to lead you. You might enjoy it for a long time, perhaps. You might get years, decades out of it, but eventually it'll come to get you. The karma of social memory, quite simply, will get you. People remember slights. They remember assholes. And once you slight people enough times, well, fuck you. That's the general attitude. And, well, they're right eventually, aren't they? Just something to think about.